we are going to give you a tour. Uh, if uh, Has anyone here been to Camp Buloa before? I have. I see a bunch of people. So, so Dan, what, what, what do we do when we say Camp Buloa? Rah, rah, Buloa. Yep, that's one of our things that we do. Well, how about Camp New Teaming, Dan? Camp New Teaming. Men of the Woods. There you go. Camp Trail, I don't think, has a tradition like that. So those are the three camps that do the... Uh, Where? Uh, no, stop it, Dan. All right. So... Uh, um, so we are, we're going to show you, if you did not know, but you know, where the day camp side of Camp Bulawa, where the lake is and, and the uh, Dingman cabin and the parking lot and all that stuff, uh, that's um, one side of the camp. But there is a whole other side of, of the camp uh, that has the Corbo Room Training Center. Um, the uh, Rockland YMCA is actually uh, based out of there too. Uh, but there's a scouting museum uh, in the building as well. And uh, we are going to, you know what? Danny, that's a good question. Um, uh, and since Dan is actually the scouting, is Dan, you are a scouting heritage counselor. Does this count towards scouting heritage? Yes, this will count towards scouting heritage. Great, 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 great. Um, awesome. So there you go, uh, Danny. Um, and uh, anyway, so we're going to show you uh, the scouting museum at, at Camp Bullo. There's some pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, and uh, we're going to we're going to get started. OK, so, Dan, I'm just going to turn it over to you. If you have any questions, please type them to me. Dan will not be monitoring the uh, chat. So make sure you are sending them to me. All right. Go ahead, Dan. Thank you. All right. So like John said, uh, myself and Kim, we're down here at the Bulwa Scouting Museum. It's a small room, but it's jam packed with tons of scouting history. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I also brought a few neckerchiefs from my own uh, personal scouting collection that I've uh, built up over uh, recent years. Uh, but let me just pan the camera around. I'll show you the whole room a little bit. So, you know, right behind me, we got a, a nice wooden cutout of a Boy Scout in one of the uh, older uniforms, you know, the older green uniforms and uh, figures in this case right over here. Okay. And I'm just going to pan around. We're going to show you more of some of the exhibits up much closer. But I just kind of want to show you the room. We have a nice uh, display case right there with a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, more display cases over there. The other side. Some uh, uniforms uh, from different time frames right in the middle of the room on some hangers there. Uh, we got a hat over there, which I'm going to be talking about in a lot more detail soon. Uh, up on the ceiling, we have a whole bunch of different scouting mugs. You know, just tons of stuff. Lots of really cool scouting history here. Uh, so I think I'm going to start off by showing you guys some of the neckerchiefs from my own personal collection. Uh, so, you know, I've been working at Camp Bulwa for a number of years now. Uh, well, last year was my first year at Camp Bulwa. And, uh, you know, I, I love Bulwa. It's a fantastic place to be. I also worked at Camp New Teaming back in 2016, and that's also a fantastic camp. So I've started the last couple of years a little collection of some of the uh, council memorabilia stuff I found on eBay, auctions, stuff like that. So I've got a couple of neckerchiefs over here from my collection. So I have a Camp Bolo staff neckerchief right there, and you'll see it says Rockland County Council on it. Bolo used, uh, before the councils merged, Rockland County used to be its own council. You know, and then I have another one here. And most of the Bulu and neckerchiefs that I have are from the, uh, are from the time that it was Rockland County Council. I don't know if there's any out there that say Hudson Valley on them. I don't think there is. I have another blue one here. And this one's actually also in the museum elsewhere. I'll probably show you that in a little more detail too. And then I've got some Camp New Teaming stuff here. So this one... This one I really like because it's Camp New Teaming Staff neckerchief and it actually has a year on it. So it says 1968. So that's Camp New Teaming Staff from 1968 and that used to be the Dutchess County Council. And then this one, very similar, it's yellow. This one was probably more like a participant or leader neckerchief because it doesn't say staff on it. Um, same image though, so it's probably from a similar time frame, uh, if not the same year. So. Uh, just some cool, really interesting stuff right there. And I'm going to turn the camera around and show you uh, the hat that I want to talk about that I just find extremely fascinating. Okay. So this hat, based off of the display case and uh, what's behind it, 
uh, belonged to Daniel Carter Beard. All right. So if you don't know who Daniel Carter Beard is, he is one of the founders of the BSA. So when the Boy Scouts were starting over in America, there were several different youth groups that already existed. One of them was the Sons of Daniel Boone, which Daniel Carter Beard actually started. And it worked very similar to scouting, but it, they taught like the outdoor skills, the pioneering skills, stuff like that, knots. And, uh, you know, they ended up merging that group with a, another, a couple other groups and formed the Boy Scouts of America. So he was one of the key organizers with the Boy Scouts of America. And he, lived, he was born out in Ohio, but then he moved to the East Coast. And, uh, you know, he lived in Rockland County for a long time. And he's actually buried in Rockland County. Uh, so, you know, we got some stuff from him here at the museum. So like I said, the hat, which I showed you, you know, it's right there. We also have a book over here that's signed by him. So you can see his signature on it in the display case. Okay. And uh, a lot of cool stuff. So I think I'm going to turn it over to Kim to show you some other cool stuff. So let me just move the camera over to the exhibit that she's at. All right. I'm going to start by showing you a display of slides that are in here. Um, just assorted slides. I think as Cub and BSA Scouts, you probably have your own collection. Um, what drew me to this is that this is a slide that I got from my father. Um, it says Rocky Ball. Um, so my father is in his 70s right now. He has told me stories about him camping up here at um, Camp Bola. Um, you know, I really can't make out the cabins that he stayed in um, because he'll tell me that like he went sledding on these large hills, but you know, the landscape has changed a lot um, in this time. So he was here probably in um, the mid, mid 60s, late 60s. Um, camping. Um, so a lot of trees have grown and stuff. So it's very hard for me to, um, to compare the areas. But I have this from him. And it says Rocky Bull. And again, I associate it with Camp Bolola. In this display here, um, this one is the same slide, except it has been painted. Um, so there's definitely some slides that here that have been mass produced, but there's other slides like this one or this the cannon here that have been um, poured with resin and then painted. The same thing with the Fleur de Lis here. Um, what good um, BSA Scout doesn't have a great woggle. Um, this one right here, I was trying to research and I got sidetracked, the BSA, be prepared, um, I believe is the shape of Orange County and that has been hand carved. Um, so just some really interesting slides here. Okay, so a lot of cool slides right there. Uh, I also want to show you guys another exhibit that's right behind me over here. Let's see if the camera wire will reach it. Okay. So in this display case, you can see the blue neckerchief that I showed you that I have a similar copy of. Uh, it also has two pictures behind it of the Bulawa sisters. So, you know, this is what our camp is named after. And the Bulawa sisters actually provided a lot of the funding that we needed to, uh, to, to uh, purchase Camp Bolova back when it was purchased, first purchased in the uh, 40s. Uh, so that was very important to the camp. And then we also have something else very interesting here. So I'm just gonna take the computer with me because my wire's not long enough. So we have a book here that says Lions Through Weeblows. So 
for those of you who don't know, uh, Lions are a relatively new thing right now uh, with kindergarten age boys, and they're able to join Cub Scouting. But Lions used to be a thing many years ago. And, uh, you know, when they got rid of them for a long time, and then they, they brought them back recently. So that's a very interesting thing about the Lions. We also have a Rockland County Council's Council of Rock right over here. So, you know, that's a cool little piece of history. Uh, a lot of old books on the shelf, an old mess kit right there. That's pretty cool. And an old merit badge sash with some old merit badges. And then behind me, we got a picture up here of the uh, Payton Lodge. And that's one of the newest additions to Camp Bulawa. And that's a new cabin that was built in about 2010, uh, you know, in memorial to uh, its namesake, Payton. But yeah, so that's uh, very interesting stuff there. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Kim to talk a little more. So Dan had just mentioned an old basket. So I wanted to show you this old pack here. So does this look like the packs that you guys bring to your sleepovers? A little bit, huh? It's got some dirt on it. So it says Boy Scouts of America, National Council. Okay. I'm going to be gentle, but it does have its original content in it. It has a canteen, an official trail canteen. The scout has earned second class scout and tenderfoot. Okay, Adrian from 1963 and 1964. Okay, part of the mask Okay, the other half. So you can see the mess kits haven't really changed a whole lot. They're still metal. Uh, some of you might have plastic ones nowadays, but you know, I still use a metal one that I got when I was a Cub Scout. Okay, here are your utensils. So again, they haven't changed much. Um, this utensil, this mess kit has come, was made in England. So that has changed a bit. Okay. Also in here, we have a can opener from Spring Valley, New York. We have a slide that has not changed at all. I have a button, probably from his uniform. A trusty compass. I do not believe it's in working order anymore. Um, I believe it's been used a bit. It's got a couple cracks in it. And with the Boy Scouts of America symbol on it. Oh, this scout was prepared. Another set of silverware. And this actually has a stamp on it. He has labeled it. I told you his name was um, Adrian. And again, these have not changed much at all, the way they are held together. Uh, and like any good Boy Scout, there is plenty of dirt in the bottom of this bag. Okay. All right. So I just thought that was a really cool bag. He's got some hooks on here that you can hook some things with, um, with some good old fashioned knots or a carabiner. 
not sure um, what the carabiners looked like in 1963. Yeah, with the backpacks from uh, that day and age, they actually used to hook their straps right to those hooks, and then they'd be able to hook them right to their back from there. Okay, so I'm going to put this back very carefully and then turn it back over to Dan. All right, so I have another really cool uh, exhibit right here. So, you know, it's a, you see a shelf of books, and you can see a couple handbooks right on the shelf. Uh, and I want to show you a couple things that I find extremely interesting. So when you guys take a merit badge, they have a merit badge booklet for all the different merit badges that you could possibly take. Okay. So, you know, you, uh, I don't see any, uh, actually give me one second. I brought a book with me. So this is what they look like nowadays. All right, you're probably very familiar with the merit badge pamphlets and how they look now. Uh, all the information you need to take the merit badge right in the pamphlet. Now, when I was a scout, they looked a little bit different. So here's a merit badge book. This is similar style. It looks a little bit older from, than when I was a scout, but it would be the same style of book. A couple years before that, now well, here's another one, American Business. I know some of you might have taken American Business last week. So, you know, uh, much older book right here. And then you have some even older books right here. So we got the uh, salesmanship batch here. Some of you may have taken that last week or might be doing it next week. So, you know, merit badge pamphlets have been around for a very long time uh, for all the merit badges and uh, the different things involved with the merit badge. Hey, Dan. Yes. I got a question here. Do you know if there's a beekeeping merit badge booklet in there? Have you seen one yet? I have not looked through them all. There is a lot of merit badge pamphlets here, uh, but I cannot give you a good answer on that. Um, I do believe it was a merit badge at one point or another. And uh, we're actually going to show you soon a couple different uh, merit badge cards. When you guys earn merit badges now, you get a little card saying, you know, so-and-so earned this. And there's some really different merit badges in that collection that we don't have anymore. Uh, so do we want to show them that next, Kim? Sure. Yeah, so let me just bring the camera over there. I'm going to lay them out. Okay. So I found this collection of cards. Um, so this first collection here it's just certificate of registration. Um, okay, so these pretty much all belong to the same person and they're all in the 50s. So this says 1953 to 1954. So this is one um, design and this is a second design. Forward on Liberty's team. Okay, and the date on here is 1956 to 1957. Okay, um, all of these say um, Pearl River, New York, except this one here um, from 1951 um, is Lexington, Kentucky. Um, and it has the same design I showed you originally. Okay. Um, this I thought was very interesting. Dan showed you a Lion Scout book earlier. It was Lion to Weeblos? Yes. Okay, so as you know, um, the lions have just made a return within maybe, is it the last four or five years, John? Um, so this is a lion card and this is from 1953. I thought that was very, very interesting. So good work. You are now a lion cub, cub scout. Um, you can have fun while you work on your electives and earn your gold and silver arrow points. When you are nine months older, you will be Weeblo. Your den mother will show you how. So lions today are kindergarten age boys. And this was a question we actually had come up earlier. And I wasn't sure at the time, but this answers it for us. 
Uh, lions back then were the rank before weed lows. Yeah. And another interesting uh, point, if, if anyone was with us in week one, um, we had a scare, scouting uh, in the past panel and uh, our one uh, person who was in scouts in the 50s and 40s, uh, he was a Cub Scout back then. And, uh, and you know, one of the questions is, what kind of belt loops did you have? Um, and um, no, they earned uh, silver and gold arrow points. And that's what it says on the car. And actually, one of the questions here is, what is an arrow point? It's the little tiny silver and gold arrow points that, put on the, uh, that were put on the uh, Cub Scout uh, uniform. Uh, even I, when I was a Cub Scout in the 90s, we had those uh, as well as the belt loops. But they're, but they're discontinued now. And then also it says your den mother will show you how. So now we have den leaders. So mom, dad can be your den leader. It doesn't have to be a den mother anymore. Okay, to move on to um, what they called um, Boy Scouts, but now we are referring to BSA Scouts. We have some rank cards. Um, so here is one for a second class scout in 1954. Um, so you have advanced another rank in scouting. And this certificate is given as a recognition of what you have accomplished. It has taken work, but you have had the satisfaction of reaching the goal that you set for yourself. Now there is a new goal ahead, your next scout rank. And along with this, there was a record. Um, now you would see this more in your scout book now, but it had the requirements of your hike, your hiking methods, your first aid. And under here, it said you had to dis, um, demonstrate um, certain things here. Um, he had compass, measuring, map reading, um, cook a meal in an oven. It's almost like a blue card for your scout rank for the uh, second yeah. class. Fire building, hike cooking, clean up, um, be observant, observation, wildlife, take a hike. So I thought that was very interesting, very fragile. I also have cards here that show first class scout, life scout. Um, these are all a little bit different. This is junior leader training. Now today we call it NYLT, which is national leadership training. Uh, so yes, they, they have changed the names of some of the things that you guys may recognize, probably very similar though. This card is folded in half, but I don't want to unfold it. I don't want to ruin the integrity of it to see what's inside. Okay, I have a tote and chip. So very similar to the card you get today, a little different, but uh, in style, but you know, you guys probably all learned, earned your uh, tote and chip before. Here would be um, your lifeguard BSA card. Um, so if you were on staff at a camp, you could earn this. This is a Citizens Now conference um, earned at West Point, New York. And I guess this would be an adult leader's card. Well, no, it actually no. says it's an explorer's card. So, you know, anyone here part of venturing? Can I see a show of hands? Anyone in venturing? No, no one? Oh, I see a couple of people. Okay. Uh, so venturing is a program that's kind of 14 to 21, and it's co-ed in a, uh, for exploring program. You know, exploring today is more career-oriented. And I have an order of the arrow card here. I do not know what those cards look like these days. I do not. Okay. It must be a secret. So we also have a lot of merit badge cards over there. And 
uh, you know, we, we are running a little long, so let's just pick a few of the more interesting ones. I guess right. we'll show the four that I picked out that we no longer have. Yeah. Okay, so I saw a badge for World Brotherhood. So um, World Brotherhood is probably very similar to what citizenship in the world is nowadays. Okay. I have firemanship. I have marksmanship, which is probably um, archery or um, the blue cards themselves. We're still blue. Okay. So there is one more piece I want to show you in the museum uh, before we end that I find extremely interesting. So let me just move my camera back over here for a second. Okay. And it's actually one of these uniforms that I got right behind me. So it's the old green uniform. Yes. Uh, Boy Scout uniforms used to be green. Okay. And, you know, we can look at the uh, insignia on it. So this was a unit commissioner. Now, I don't want to mess with it too much. Uh, but that means, so this was probably an adult leader's uniform. And the council strip right here, now again, I don't want to mess with it too much. I don't want to pull at it uh, to try to make it visible for the camera just to show you. But it says Rockland County Council, so it's someone who is local. All right. Adult leaders, even today, they still can earn knots. And they all look very similar. This one right here is uh, a little faded on the camera there. The red, white, and blue rope knot, that's what you can get if you get Eagle Scout and you go to become an adult leader, you would get that knot right there. Uh, then one other thing I want to point out that I find very interesting is the National Jamboree pouch, uh, patch right here. So this uh, leader looks like he went to the National Jamboree in 1964 at Valley Forge. So before we had the summit, you know, they would have the Jamboree different places. It was at Fort A.P. Hill in Virginia for a number of years. Uh, but back in 64, it was at Valley Forge, you know, the same place that uh, the Continental Army Camp during World War, uh, yeah, during the Revolutionary War. Uh, during the Revolutionary War, uh, George Washington and his army uh, camped there during the winter, and it was a very rough winter. Uh, so with that said, I think it, we have one more thing. Just really quick. Okay. Can I answer it right? Yes. So we have one more thing over here. I'd like to end it with a scout is trustworthy. A scout is loyal. A scout is helpful. A scout is friendly. A scout is courteous. A scout is kind. A scout is obedient. A scout is cheerful. A scout is thrifty. A scout is brave. A scout is clean. And a scout is reverent. Yep. All right. So there's a ton of other stuff in this museum. We just don't have the time to show you everything. And there's a lot of other scouting museums out there too. Uh, so you know, if you ever get a chance to go to a scouting museum, I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, the one at Bulawa, you can make a, an appointment to come. It's not open all the time, but uh, you know, there's other scouting museums out there. I've been to one up at Ten Mile River before. There's the National Scouting Museum at Philmont. Um, they're all, they're, they're all over the place, and there's a lot of great ones out there and a lot of history in scouting. You know, nowadays, there's the Scouting Heritage Merit Badge, which was just started in 2010 when the Boy Scouts hit their centennial, their 100-year anniversary. And that's a great merit badge to take. Some of you might be taking it. And, uh, you know, it's all about scouting's history because there's so much history there. The organization has been around for over 100 years at this point. You know, started in 1910 in the America and before that in England. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if we have any questions, I could take them now.
Well, I got a couple uh, points that Dan already talked about uh, the uh, National Museums. You know, I did a quick Google search uh, before this, and I couldn't believe how many scouting museums there are across the country. Um, you know, uh, and that they're all over the place. Look, I had the uh, um, uh, good fortune to be able to go to the National Scouting Museum when it was in Texas, but they moved it to Philmont, as Dan said. So that's actually a relatively new change. Uh, so it's at the Philmont Scout Ranch. If you ever have a chance to go to Philmont, please, please make sure you go do that. Uh, but do a, a quick Google search uh, uh, for that. I guess there's also a virtual one that you can uh, that you can see as well. Uh, and then if anyone's in the Northeast, uh, one um, uh, museum that I recommend uh, that you might not necessarily think of as a scouting museum is the Norman Rockwell uh, Museum in Massachusetts. Uh, Norman Walk Rockwell did a, a bunch of the artwork and the paintings of uh, scouting uh, back in the day. So it's a big point of that. So um, Dan, I have a question here. Um, if you could add a 13th point to the scout law, what would it be and why? Oh, that, that's always a tough one. Uh, you know, the scout, the scout law is really good as it's written. And, you know, you could name a whole lot of stuff uh, that you think would be good, but it's probably covered in some respect by the other points. Now, uh, if I had to choose one, I'd say a scout is respectful, but you could say it's the same as courteous. So, uh, you know, it's, it's tough, but, uh, you know, I think the law is pretty pretty good as it is. I, I would say um, a scout is hungry, or uh, after teaching merit badges, a scout procrastinates. But anyway, so uh, it's all good, um, and uh, that was a good question. Um, we answered most of the questions uh, along the way. Does anyone have any uh, other questions? I, I guess uh, uh, Danny here was asking, um, do we know how old that bag is? Do we know, did it say anywhere? I, I do not think we know how 60s. old the bag is. It was 1963. 1963, Kim says. 1963, that's great. Awesome. All right, does anyone else have any questions? If not, I think we're good. Danny, Kim, thank you so much for uh, uh, heading on over to the other side of camp and, and doing that. And um, if anyone has any questions, we'll see you uh, later at 3 o'clock. And just remember, we do the cl uh, closing and end-of-day announcements directly following the guest speaker. And, and just a reminder, guest speaker today is someone who's going to be talking about wood carving. All right, so we will see you at 3 o'clock, and we'll also see you at your merit badges. All right, guys, have a good day.